What's up, guys? This is DDP back with another Mavericks postgame show. This was a brutal season debut. There's no two ways about it. The Dallas Mavericks got their butts absolutely trounced, particularly in that second half as they lose 113 to 87 to kick off their season against the Atlanta Hawks. Now, I'm not going to linger too much on this game. It is one game of 82, but I will say this. You can't base an entire season projection off of one game, obviously, but you can see glaring faults. And not just faults that we knew about before, that being that this team doesn't have a real creator or distributor outside of Luka Doncic, but also things like scheme. What's their system look like offensively? Keep in mind, two years ago, the Mavericks had the most efficient offense in NBA history, and that last year, they were still the 8th rated offense. You can say all you want about hating Rockets ball or not liking Rick Carlisle's system and basing it on what happened in the playoffs the last two years. I understand that. I do. But I will say, you had Luka average 35 in the playoffs last year. You went to Game 7 against a team that was better equipped than you. They went all the way to the Western Conference Finals. And really... All that you had to do was get better players. And while Dallas seemed to suggest they understood that in the exit interviews, they did not act on that. Dallas completely scrapped Rick Carlisle's system. I kind of get it. But Jason Kidd saying, hey, we're going to work more in the mid-range was, I think, disastrous. And the reason I say that isn't because philosophy-wise it's bad. It's a little counterintuitive, but... It is fair to say, hey, if you look at the two teams that were in the finals last year, the mid-range game played a huge part in that. Jason Kidd cited that himself. But I will say, look at the players they had to execute that. They were better built and equipped for that. This Mavericks roster has largely remained the same in recent years. This is a team that the past three years or so has been built around Rockets ball. Dorian Finney-Smith doing turning down an open corner three to take a long distance pull up two should never happen. Dorian Finney-Smith shot like 40% from three in the corners last year. So for him to turn down that shot to take a pull up jumper that clanks off the side, almost underside of the rim, inexcusable. Other times the floor spacing was completely discombobulated. Uh, you, You would have situations where Luca and Dorian Finney-Smith are doing a pick and roll at the top of the key, and there's nobody in the weak side corner. They have instead two Mavericks on the strong side crowding each other on the three-point line. That's horrible spacing. Other times you had pick and rolls, whether it was Luca and Dwight or Luca and KP, and as they're doing the pick and roll, you have like Jalen Brunson cutting into the paint. You're clogging and crowding the paint. And yes, the Mavericks took 43 three-point attempts, so you might be saying like, oh, well, how can you be so harsh on the mid-range game? I'll explain that in a second, but you might have had 43 three-point attempts, but a lot of those were bad attempts, like not even penetrating the lane and kicking out, not spacing the floor well and getting guys wide open in that weak side corner on skip passes. These were just ill-advised threes, no movement, no anything significant to really create the good or optimal opportunities for you. And you were posting up a lot more. KP had, I think, one or two good possessions in the post. He commented after the game that he loves his teammates trying to get him some looks in the post, but it's like, other than really one play, there wasn't a whole lot there to suggest like, yeah, this is a good thing to build the offense around. Hell, they posted Dorian Finney-Smith in the post at one point. Like, that makes no sense. As uh, as Josh Bowe wrote on Mavs Moneyball, Dorian Finney-Smith had two post-ups all of last year. And what happened when he tried it here? He got his shot thrown back at him by Clint Capella. I'll say this, man. The Hawks, they're a good team. They were not a fluke to go to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. But unlike Dallas, they actually got their superstar and then aggressively built around him. That's what drives me crazy about it. I don't think Trey Young is better than Luka, but he actually got help, whereas Luka didn't. They obviously were in basically the same exact boat when they came into the league as far as how good their teams were. But one team was aggressive in not just free agency signings. Yeah, they overspent for some of those guys, but they got talent there, and that's what matters. 
They didn't look at it and say, oh, what's the long-term ramifications of this? And are we willing to go into the salary, you know, into the into the tax penalty and all of that? They were aggressive. And then, yeah, luck broke their way as they acquired Clint Capella as Houston lost its damn mind. And they've built a really good team. DeAndre Hunter was a menace to Dallas last night. When Maverick shooters uh, attempted their shots last night with him as their primary defender, they shot one of 13. Luka Doncic was one of nine. Luka started the game two of ten with four assists and five turnovers. That's your game. The Mavericks' offense was a discombobulated mess. The floor spacing was horrendous. They took 17 mid-range shots. They took 19 right at the rim. Only two more shots right at the rim than they attempted in the mid-range. And how did they fare on those mid-range shots? They shot five of 17. 22%. percent hmm 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 mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> and again, I think if you're going to... I don't think the problem was the system they had offensively before. Obviously, if you look at their success in that department the two years prior, you say, oh, and again, uh, Josh Bowe's article po- pointed this out on Maps Moneyball. The problem was the players. You didn't have good enough talent executing it. That's why Luka, in a, in a Game 7 winner-take-all, is bawling out of his mind, but his teammates can't throw it into the ocean. And Dallas is like, oh, no, 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 we got you, Pam. We got you. Reggie Bullock. Sterling Brown. What did those guys do last night? Nothing. I, I, I think Dallas didn't even utilize its defensive players enough. And some of the lineup combinations they had, I didn't think were optimal. Uh, Dwight Powell, his value that he adds to the team. I don't know, man. Like, kid went to Luca, KP, and Tim Hardaway Jr. before the year started and asked who they wanted to start at the five. And they all said Dwight Powell. But here's the thing. That snapshot of time you had before Dwight's Achilles injury back in January two years ago, uh, when KP woke up in January, you had a small window of time where he was balling out KP and Dwight Powell was playing the five for the Mavericks and everything was clicking for Carlisle's offense. And then Dwight had his injury, they moved KP to the five and KP kept balling out, but it was still different. It still didn't have quite the the dynamicism. Dynamis? Dynamicism? I'm making that more that more complicated than it needs to be. But the offense wasn't as dynamic as it could have been before. And even other coaches like Steve Kerr acknowledge that after playing the Mavericks. So that, that that's a big thing. It's like that combination can work if you use them like Carlisle did. And again, the fact that we're having to talk about Carlisle like he's an offensive innovator is kind of bad in comparison. <laughs> but... That's that's what the system was. Well, Jason Kidd in one night did not use Dwight Powell at all, like Carlisle did. And so it's like, bro, if you're not going to use Powell to his strength, why is he here? Just because your veterans vouched for him? They didn't vouch for him based on how you want to use him. They vouched for him based on how he was used in the past. There are There are major concerns here. The defense in the first half was good. They held Trey Young reasonably in check until the third quarter when the game blew open. The Hawks absolutely blew the the doors off the building, it felt like, in that third quarter. Uh, They shot 64% did the Hawks compared to just 28% for the Mavericks. Trey Young in that quarter alone, 12 points, 9 assists. The Hawks, uh, this is from Kevin Gray Jr. here, uh, the Hawks had 22 assists at that point whereas the Mavericks had 22 made field goals. And after three, what had been a fairly close game in the first half, if ugly offensively for Dallas, uh, was a 86-64 lead for Atlanta going into going into the fourth quarter. This went from a ugly slugfest to, oh, okay, so now Atlanta's going to go play. Now we go win. Thanks for coming. It's brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. And again, the fact that they took just 19 shots at the rim compared to 17 mid-range shots. And even if you add all those together, you're still talking about like 19 made field goals out of like 56, something like that. Like, it's just not good. It is not good. It's an abomination of a game. Uh, Here's the chart here. Let me look at this. So Dallas, from one corner three, they were 0 of 5. 
top of the key, they were 11 of 34. 5 of 17 in the mid-range. Then top of the paint, kind of in that in-between between true mid-range and right at the rim. They were 2 of 14, so that's brutal too. And then 11 of 19 at the rim. There's really only one green zone on their efficiency, uh, and that was the right three-point line in the corner. They were 2 of 3. Yeah. Not good. And after the game, Jason Kidd said, yeah, I liked the looks we got. We just didn't knock them down. And the point out from Tim McMahon on that was, let me see here. Per second spectrum, Mavs expected shot quality last night was 48.4%. That stat was only worse for the Mavericks in six games last year. But Kidd said the guys got, quote, Great looks, they just didn't go in for them tonight. Yeah. I do want to give some context to that, though. Jake Kemp adds on Twitter um, to McMahon's stat there. I'm going to just read his tweet here. Uh, he says, while this is probably my favorite stat to track over the last few years, it can be kind of misleading uh, for a team like Dallas. They ranked 26 last year because Lucas started taking and killing in the 96th percentile mid-range shots. He then expands on that. The Hawks were 21st, the Suns were 22nd, the Clippers were 25th. That means teams with shooters who can consistently hit in areas considered inefficient aren't going to grade well. Most teams don't have them. So that's context. That gives some context to it. But even still, I think this team is not built to take a lot of those shots. The fact that you're trying to turn Dorian Finney-Smith in year six to a pull-up jump shooter? Mm-mm. You have Luka, who was great in that area last year, as Jake Kemp mentioned. KP, who has shown himself to be capable, but inconsistent in recent years with it as well. And Hardaway Jr., who's always been kind of streaky in general, especially with the mid-range. So, yeah, you got like three guys. I would, I mean, maybe Brunson, four guys that you can kind of trust to take mid-range shots. That's not ideal. That's not something you look at and you say, you know what, this is an underrated strength of our team. I think we need to focus more of our efforts here. Dude, if you have like a DeMar DeRozan or someone that eats and lives and breathes in the mid-range, then fine, work your offense towards that. A Chris Paul, for instance, work your offense towards that. But don't, don't try to take guys that are already being asked to play over their heads and then say, Hey, can you incorporate this to your game now? Dorian Finney-Smith in the post and pull-up jumpers is not how you use Dorian Finney-Smith. Th this was a brutal game. Uh, as far as other call-outs from this game, I already said what a menace DeAndre Hunter was for the Mavericks when he was guarding them. Clint Capella murders the Mavericks. It took KP like 15 minutes of the game to log his first rebound, which is unforgivable. He was 11 and 5 was his stat line. I think, let me pull up his exact shooting. I want to say it was like uh, 4 of 13. Yeah, that's that's bad. <laughs> 4 of 13 shooting for KP, including 1 of 4 from 3. Luka had 18, 11, and 7 on 6 of 17 shooting, 2 of 7 from 3. Dorian Finney Smith, 2 of 12 shooting. That's a lot of shots for Dorian Finney Smith, first of all. One of six from three, but he ends with five and eight. Uh, Hardaway Jr. was helping keep Dallas in it early on. He had about 11 at half, ended with 14. That tells you how the second half went for him. Brunson does score 17 on seven of 13 shooting, including three of five. But I didn't feel like he had a strong game. But the fact that you're having to call out Brunson is arguably one of your better players on the night. Not good. Not like, no disrespect to Brunson. He's a nice player. But the fact that you're having to kind of say, like, yeah, I guess he had a good game. Everyone else, I feel like, kind of had a down game. You're like, eh, that's, that's not a good recipe for success for the Mavericks. Uh, let's see. We got nothing out of Sterling Brown. Josh Green got four minutes, was one of two from the field with two. Oh, excuse me. That's uh, four minutes, two points. I didn't even really notice when... Nilekina was in there, but he had four minutes, 0 of 2 from the field, including 0 of 1 from 3. Trey Burke, 9 minutes, 5 points, excuse me, 5 rebounds, 3 points. 
No, that is Sterling Brown. Who, so who is this one? Oh, sorry, that was Moses Brown who didn't get to play. My mistake. The point is it was a disaster. Reggie Bullock off the bench, 15 minutes, 3 points, 1 of 4 from the field, 1 of 3 from 3. Again, that's your star actual acquisition in free agency, because other than that, it was just getting a new deal on Luka and on Tim Hardaway Jr. It, I, I look at a lot of things here and I say, you know, I don't feel like the offense was broken by any means before. I just felt like you didn't have the optimal players to run it. And yet you tried to fix it. And I think you might have broken it worse. But we'll see. I'm going com- to reserve complete judgment on that. I'm just going to say the first sample, the, uh, the early preview, if you will, not, not good. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how the offense looks. But this team has a lot of questions it has to answer. And I don't think they're going to be much better defensively. So if you're going to take what was a perennial top 10 offense and turn it into a middle of the road or even bottom half, bottom third, I can't even fathom bottom third with Luka running the show. Even if it's a bad system, I feel like Luka's going to hold them in the middle of the league. But you took what was one of the top five, top 10 offenses in the league and turned it into a you know, 14, 15, 16 range. And then you took a defense that was 19th, and you maybe bumped that up to like mm, 17. Is that better? I don't think that's better, especially not if your quality of shots are going to be that poor. So we'll see. But uh, it was an ugly game. Trey Young woke up in the second half. Uh, You still have the situation with John Collins, who I kept saying I wanted Dallas to go try and get. Still killed Dallas, 16-9 with three assists, 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 3. Capella, 12 points, 13 boards, 6 of 6 from the field. Yep. I said for a while I wanted Dallas to go try and acquire him from Houston. They never tried, so he wound up in Atlanta. I wanted them to go try and steal away John Collins, but I kind of knew once they went to the Eastern Finals that they weren't going to mess with their team. They were going to try and keep everybody and keep running it back, which, yeah, whatever. Collins got his big deal, and uh, looks like a good fit for it. Yeah, Cam Reddish, by the way, the other piece that was acquired in the Luka Doncic trade for Trey Young, he had 20 points off the bench on 7 of 15 shooting. It's just frustrating to look at this and see one team that aggressively built around its young star and one team that kept gaslighting its own fan base saying they don't understand and they don't know what they're talking about and not being relatively in the same ballpark. They put everything on Luka and to a lesser extent KP and they have major faults in this roster and now they've tinkered with the offensive system and I don't know how to feel about that. I'm hoping last night was the aberration but they play tomorrow night against Toronto in Toronto, no less. So they've got to figure some things out. And uh, we'll see. But I've already talked more on this game than I cared to. I have written an article for the Smoking Cuban. Hopefully that drops uh, later this afternoon. So if you haven't already, like the video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.